Cool. All right, hey everybody. My name is Andre Eaton, and I'm with Dee Norris, the director of Smart People. Hello, hello. So, Dee, can you tell us a little about little? Uh, could you tell us a little a bit about Smart People and what it's about? Um, no, I can't. I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> uh, Smart People is um, pretty much a day in the life of four individuals who seem random at first, and they of course, come together toward the end. And um, so the, the, the things that they go through, I can't remember the word I want to use, the things they go through in their normal life, especially as the ethnicities they are. So we have one African-American male, we have one African-American female, we have one Asian female, and we have one Caucasian male. And um, they are dealing with the struggles that each race has a, a stereotypical tendency to go through. Mm -hmm. What initially, what initial, initially drew you to Smart People and wanting to direct it? Uh, the, my first introduction to Smart People was. Uh, I did. A, I was selected for a reading of the script, um, directed by some guy. Uh, what was his name? Oh, Andre, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I played the. Well, I read the role of Jackson, of course, mm -hmm. since that was the only role I could fit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was. It was. It was really. Uh, an interesting read, uh, especially it was the first time I, I'd read it, like I said, and um, the Asian female that that um, that read with us, the Jenny part, is a good friend of mine, and she expressed how well the writer, the, how well the writer wrote out her character being a half Chinese, half I believe Japanese um, character and how authentic it felt for her to say those words. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt the same way as the African-American character, uh, male character rather, um, how, how authentic these words were. And, you know, with such a wide gambit of races represented, none of us could really tell what race the writer was because she was so authentic in each and every one. Um, so we could really tell, you know, whatever her race is, and I really still don't know to this day, uh, she must have did an amazing amount of research to to get it right. And that's that's what led me to become a part of it now to go ahead and direct it and see, you know, what things I could do differently than you <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding um everybody has their their uh fingerprint of how they want to act or how they want to direct and yeah. you know i just wanted to um to see what take i can put on it uh, mm -hmm. with the characters that that i have or the mm -hmm. actors that i have and this is a, this is actually the first time i don't know if you're going to ask this question later but this is actually the first time I've worked with a cast that I have not previously worked with any of the actors before now. So we're all new to each other and it's it's interesting. Yeah. In a good way. <laughs> do you find any, or I guess, do you find directing this for, I guess, Zoom or digital um, format, I guess, difficult for your interpretation of Zoom for, for the show? Or I guess, would you have rather done like a full production or I guess, how do you feel about I guess how how are you feeling directing this this piece for Zoom? Uh, it's definitely different. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say I rather I much rather do it live, and I'm pretty sure most of us would. Uh, but this translates to Zoom. Um, it, it translates to Zoom very well. Um, mm -hmm. There there are some th certain things, of course, that we are not allowed to do. Like one of the scenes has. But actually, three of the scenes have some really close contact with the actors, and so we have to make adjustments to see how to make that realistic in a virtual setting. Mm -hmm. So it is definitely a huge adjustment, uh, but we're making it work. 
there's a lot of, I guess, humor in smart people, I think. And most people don't think of shows about race necessarily being funny. Do you think um, that is a necessary component in order to, um, I guess, to uh, present a show about race that people will, I guess, ingest more easily? Oh, absolutely. Uh, humor, humor is the sugar to make the medicine go down better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it, it's more well received when humor is either in the front or behind or infused into those serious situations or, or heavy topics that uh, this play and other plays touch on. Mm -hmm. And my, I guess, final question is, what do you hope the audience walks away with after seeing the show? Oh my goodness. Um, I hope the audience walks away with a deeper understanding of the races that they're, of which they're not a part of. Mm -hmm. So I want our white audience to walk away with a deeper understanding of African-Americans and Asians. I want the Asians to walk away with a deeper understanding of African-Americans and Caucasians. And, um, the African American, the African Americans to walk away with a deeper understanding of the Asians and Caucasians. There we go. Um, I just another question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Do you feel like it's? I mean, that's smart people. I think it was written in. Um, off the top of my head, I don't have it here. Do you think it's timely? Still, do you think it still remains timely today? <sighs> Fortunately and unfortunately, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so fortunately that uh, this script can be set, oh, excuse me, can be placed in the 90s, 2000s, 2010s, on into 2020s and, and beyond. Because mm -hmm. um, we're, we're still dealing with some of the same things uh, culturally um, that we've been dealing with for years, for decades now. Uh, and unfortunately, because we've been dealing with the same issues decade after decade, that it remains relevant. So uh, it's going to take works like this mm -hmm. to, to, I don't know how, how quickly it's going to happen, but to, you know, close the gap of racial divide and racial uh, different. Well, there are always going to be racial differences, but the understanding of the racial differences it takes pieces like this to to start to bridge those gaps or to, to continue to bridge those gaps. Thank you for your time, Dee. Um, can you tell everyone when, like, when and how they can catch smart people? Absolutely. So we will, I'm going to get my calendar so I say it correctly the first time. Uh, we will present uh, Smart people. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the play. <laughs> we will present smart people's opening on May the 14th, which is a Friday. We will play uh, that Friday and Saturday at 8 o'clock. And again, that Sunday at 2.30. And then we play it again uh, the very next weekend, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd at the same times, Friday and Saturday at 8, Sunday at 2.30. And you can catch those on Zoom. Oh, 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 one tidbit. Um, most of us are, most of the cast members and I are located here in Atlanta, Georgia. We actually have a cast member that is coming in from Vancouver, Canada. So she streams in and, and uh, rehearsals, with, rehearsals with us and she's going to perform with us. And I say that to say... Uh, you don't have to be local to to watch this. That's one thing that Zoom does present us with. You don't have to be local to watch this production. You can be in Canada. You can be in Mexico. You can be in London. You can be in South Africa. It doesn't matter. If you want to tune in at any point in the world, you absolutely can. All right. Well, thank you, Dee. Thank you.